that, but still in line with innovation on the continent and the country as well at large. We're focusing on poverty alleviation too with our guests. Today we've got Calvin Giudici, the president and CEO of the African Summit on Entrepreneurship and Innovation, as well as Cedric Todwell, commercial director for Sistema Bio and mentor for the B Corp community. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for Thanks. joining me this afternoon, of course, on Business Today. Now, let's, let's start talking about the African Summit on Entrepreneurship and innovation first off because I, I know its uh, theme is building Africa's future through innovation it's going on November 8th to 9th and uh, one of the goals is sustainable development goals which is for an end to poverty in all its manifestations by 2030 and also let's talk about the African economy in general because it's robust we've got an average of 5% per annum in terms of growth over the last 10 years and it's placed the continent among the fastest growing regions in the world however However, it's not inclusive growth. We're seeing that there are concerns with benefits of this growth not being shared equitably for poverty reduction, reduction of income inequalities, and of course, improvement of livelihoods being key here. So despite this robust economic growth noted, there is inequality in wealth disbursement. So what are then the factors that come into play to alleviate this inequality and how can it be combated? Let me, let me start off with you, Calvin. Yeah, um, so I mean, I mean, Africa is really growing, and you know, we, we see Africa. There's a lot of interest in Africa, and um, and just what you said. I mean, there's still no balance. You know, that we have extremely rich and extremely poor, and and we're trying to see how well can we maintain this balance. And and for me, I think uh, the key thing is. Um, and, and that's what I'm seeing a lot of people getting into social uh, social enterprise. So more focus on you know solution solving. So I'm, I'm kind of seeing social enterprise actually would really really help alleviate uh, poverty as, as time goes by. Yes. Compared to even the you know the NGO uh, just focus on nonprofit. And, and and so I I think um, if we focus on that way, then we will will definitely almost carry everybody with us. So if, okay. if somebody's going to be rich, then we will still also have somebody who is in between. So for me, I see that as the clear direction. Okay, so Calvin, you're saying social enterprise is the way to go in order to equalize wealth disbursement on the continent, in the country as well. Cedric, what do you have to say? What I have to say, I think, being a, a mentor for, for B Corp, one of the things that we try and champion is uh, the three Ps. I'm sure in marketing, you know the Ps, but as we champion the three Ps, that's people, planet, and profit. So the moment you realize as companies that we have to have the people first, and then later on the planet, the profit will automatically come. So what you do when you try to mentor people is that any enterprise you're doing, be it social enterprise or be it multinationals, we've started seeing organizations like Danone, and today I'm seeing the report by Safaricom. You can realize they've gone 12 times because they started realizing where they need to focus is more into the people. Are we meeting the needs of the people as a company? So I think, Companies are moving towards more of uh, addressing the three Ps in the in the global, and with that, we can easily be able to have an equitable, equitable economy. Okay, so you're saying more people-centric, and it's it's ironic that you say that. Although a lot of entrepreneurs start off with profit in mind, yeah. not so much people and solving uh, problems, but you're saying that would be a better direction to take. Yeah. Now let's talk about the fact that forecasts show Africa's population is set to double from 1 to 2 billion over the next 32 years. By 2050, nearly one person in four on the planet will be an African. And to compound the problem, nine out of 10 persons in Africa will reside in sub-Saharan Africa. So this already brings up the accelerated unemployment issue that we're facing uh, on the continent as well as within Kenya itself. What do you think currently we're doing to combat this situation and what more needs to be put in place so that, because of course, unemployment relating to poverty is that great connection. So if we address unemployment itself, poverty alleviation should follow. So Calvin, what do you think needs to be done to increase that employment level and reduce unemployment rates yes yeah, so um, I mean I mean it's it's clear how you know how things are changing as time goes by and the, and the population is really really increasing which is which is a really really good thing because um, as you can see this, this, there's going to be a lot of changes um, uh, especially food security so if, if somebody is in Greek agriculture or or probably agribusiness is going to be the next big thing because as the population doubles, there's going to be need for a lot of money, uh, a lot of food, sorry. So there's, there's also very uh, clear concern about urban, because you find that as population grow, most people actually are going to be living in urban centers. Mm. So 
and already we've started seeing, you know, the way there's a lot of, you know, real estate development and all that, especially residential, and everybody's trying to come closer to the city. And, and, and so you, you try also to see that uh, even different countries in Africa really need to plan well when it comes to uh, urban development, because that's going to be critical part. Like, everybody's going to move to the city, so how are we going to deal with, you know, the, the population there? And, and, and also, uh, one thing that we should see that, you know, as the population doubles, then we also need to understand how we're going to um, uh, how are we going to work on the aging population? Because, you know, the aging population is going to be very, very high. So as we grow, there's also still going to be aging population. So you're going to get a very big gap. There's aging population which definitely is not employed because yes. they're voluntarily not employed. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to also have a very big junk of unemployed youth here. So you, you so I'm kind of saying, how do you balance all this? So I think that's the, the clear part. It's like, we're going to have the old here and going to have the young generation here how can African countries try to balance the two as well yeah. okay very yeah. interesting that you, you mentioned agribusiness of course and uh, something that should be looked at because people need to eat yeah that's right very true. Th yeah. Th that has to happen so mm. in order to maximize on this and of course farmers need to be given a lot of tools to do this and let me bring you in here because uh, Cedric you also are from Sistema Bio yeah. it's a leading enterprise in Latin America India Africa aiming to impact climate change food security and uh, you know, diminish poverty as well. So you say that uh, Sistema are, you know, uh, you know, um, they're talking about hybrid reactor bio de digesters. Yeah. So it's a big word. <laughs> hybrid reactor bio digesters that you have been deploying to uh, quite a few places. I've seen different counties. Meru, Kiambu, Kericho already. So mm -hmm. what are these, and how can they help the farmer? So basically. As a, as a company system, we came to realize that like, where there are animals, there's human waste. Sorry, there's waste. And where there's waste, there's money. So what we decided to do when we started System of Bio seven years ago, we realized that whatever was, the, was regarded as waste is not really waste. So we said, how can we convert yeah, animal into organic fertilizer and in the span, we the span of uh, five years since we started, we've been able to expand in, in three different continents. We came to Kenya last year. We been able within a year to be able to get 2,000, 2,000 homes using our system. So what happens is the hybrid digesters that every day farmers used to throw into waste their animal manure, but now they realize with the animal dung, they can easily put in our digester, every day they can six hours of cooking gas, and one liter of organic fertilizer basically set on, uh, on their products that we're using in buying charcoal and animal and, uh, and fertilizers. So basically it's it's providing clean energy and it's reducing the timeline as well when yeah. it comes to producing energy, reducing costs. Yeah. All right, uh, and in, in finality, I guess you don't have much time, but speaking of innovation, Kenya's ICT has launched a Huduma White Box this month, in fact, after you know talking about it for a while now, a program enabling innovators to pitch their ideas to potential backers and secure a share of about a one a billion Kenya shillings that's been dedicated there. Your final thoughts on this initiative, Calvin? Let's start with you. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's a very good initiative, and and uh, the minister has been really doing a good work when it comes to uh, fostering innovation and, and, and a lot of stuff. You know, Nigeria Digital, uh, the initiatives, and and it's really been. Great. And and so for me, uh, I mean, I think Kenya is very very innovative. Like we have. So many young people come up with ideas every single day, and they're very, very innovative. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, I think we need such kind of platforms as well. And we look at platforms that actually would help a lot of local entrepreneurs, because I know uh, we've seen this in the past, whereby you know, foreign startups, get, they easily get it out. You know, if, you, if, you, if you come from, let's say, the US, um, I mean, everybody wants to invest in your company and all that, and you easily get funding and all this okay. kind of stuff. So I think there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of interest for right. us to invest in our own. Perfect. Thank you so much, Calvin, for joining me this afternoon. Of course, uh, talking to us about African innovation, ingenuity, and of course, all, as well as investing in our entrepreneurial spirit to keep on going. On that note, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back.